What's up guys? So today's video is going to be slightly uh, more interesting and because we'll be basically building up on our knowledge that we have gained till now. So this, in case you're joining in new, this is a, this video is a part of 50 Rust Project video playlist. Go to my channel, check out the playlists and there's a 50 Rust Project playlist. This video is part of it and uh, these projects are being built sequentially and we're basically using up our knowledge that we've learned in the previous video and we're, we're building up on that knowledge. So we've worked with uh, URLs in the sense we have called URLs uh, from Rust uh, using blocking, uh, you know, blo blocking requests and then we've also used async await uh, with Tokyo and uh, we want to use that in this video to download uh, an image so we'll you will go to the rust website and download the rust logo and it will be located in your temp folder so this temp folder is different depending on what operating system you are uh, in ubuntu it's quite easy to find i'm not very sure how to find this temp folder on windows and mac so on on ubuntu everybody who's an ubuntu user you would already know uh, the temp folder but this is a is this is a good um practice so whenever you're running a software on a server right whenever you download files try to download them in, in, a, in a temp folder because usually when you're running a server uh, it'll mostly be ubuntu server right so you would always download that in a temp folder okay so uh, so here this is the demo of the project right we did cargo run and it's basically going to download this file that we have mentioned in the program and it's going to locate it under the temp folder now it's also going to add uh, this text example in front of the file and it's going to uh, put the name of the file and all of this text will all of the string will be formatted before printing it out right this whole location will be formatted before printing it out so these are the things that we have to do right so like i said we'll be using tokyo to make those async await requests we've already learned about that we've already learned how to make requests we've already learned how urls work uh, with rust we have learned about request pack the crate r-e-q-w-e-s-t the request package and tokyo package we've learned about all of those so we'll be learning more uh, we will be basically using all of that knowledge and be learning more uh, with that all right so i will cd out of it now by the way this project is already there on github github i've already shown you akhil sharma 90 is my channel uh, is my name on github uh, find me and you'll find all of these projects feel free to leave a star when you, when you clone this and feel free to uh, follow along the code if in, in case you don't want to code you can just follow along the code okay so i've made things very very simple for you in case your pro pro program doesn't work you can always look at compare your code with my program right so you don't have to be uh, confused or you don't have to wait for my replies on on youtube the code is already there okay so uh, here i'll create a new project cargo new and I will call it image and yt. Right. I hope you can see it. Cargo new image dash yt. This is the name of the project. And I will uh, cd into it. Img yt. I put yt in front of uh, the project that I built for YouTube. Here I'm going to open it up in a code window. Now I will need to switch around between these windows, right? Between the brow between the terminal and the web, uh, sorry, the code uh, IDE. Um, so please be patient with me because I'm using just one screen. I'm, I'm traveling, I'm in Goa. I think I'd mentioned that in the previous video. So I'm, uh, I, I don't have my usual setup. So I'll just need to switch to the right uh, code editor. Yeah. So now I hope you can see it. I will make sure it's full screen. Yeah, it's full screen. Okay. So firstly, the first thing that we do is we get all of the uh, dependencies in our cargo file. So in in our case, in this case, the dependencies that we want to use are firstly to be able to create a temp folder, you need a, a crate called temp file. Now all of the crates that I'm using, somebody had asked me in, in the in the comments that how do you find these crates? How do you know about these crates? Basically, these are very, very common crates that are used for Rust. So once you get used to Rust, once you get used to running learning Rust, right, uh, and working with Rust, you'll know that these dependencies are very, very common. And also on the crates website, you can go and search for them. 
Uh, but the ones that I'm using, they're very common. I mean, in the sense, any every other project that you'll pick up from GitHub, you will definitely find one of these, uh, one of these basically crates, right? So error chain is a very very common uh, crate to use. Similarly, request is something that you almost like almost all uh, Rust projects will have this. Like you can't do without request. You can't all you you can also not do without Tokyo because helps you make those async await requests, right? Uh, the only thing is for Tokyo, we need a particular version and we need some features. We need all the feature set. So we will copy and we will paste that here. So these are the dependencies that we need, okay? Now we'll come to our main.rs. main.rs file and here is where we'll start creating our code, okay? So what you wanna start with is you wanna say use error chain. And we've already worked with error chain till now, right? And I need the standard I copy. I'll need this because I need to copy uh, file I'll show you in a while I'll show you in a while I need to work with files so I'll have file basically we want to create a new directory and file right and here temp file builder we need to be able to create that temp file that I was talking about then you have your error chain this is all standard stuff so we need the IO standard IO errors to be handled we've already done this in many projects before and when we make the HTTP request we want those errors also to be handled pertaining to the request crate okay so till here everything is very very simple uh, after this now also things will be very similar because we are simply doing the Tokyo main thing that we've already done before to, to be able to make those async await requests let me see yeah so I've seen that you are able to see the screen clearly and perfectly. I keep checking that a couple of times because sometimes what happens is I forget and my face keeps covering the code and then many people complain that hey, your face is covering the code. Here you have to put a hash here. So now we'll start with func main and result. So now the code will start. So firstly, we'll create a temporary directory. How do you create it? You use builder because that's what you want. You want a temp file builder. This builder is what we'll use here, builder new and dot prefix. I showed you that prefix before the file. We're writing example there and that in the terminal, I showed you that and dot temporary directory. So this will be our temporary directory. Okay. Now we have talked about the URL that we have to uh, hit to, to download that file. So the URL that I want to hit is going to be stored in this target variable. And the URL is very simple. It's, it's on the Rust website. So like I said, we'll be hitting the Rust website itself. Uh, that's the irony here. And we want the Rust logo itself. So we'll say Rust logo. And the logo, the file name is actually uh, Rust logo. And we want the 512 by 512 version, which is the standard square uh, image. And we want the PNG format. And then once you have that sorted, I don't know why this is getting closed out here. It should actually get closed at the end. Now my response will have the response which will be which we'll get by using request and uh, you'll make a get request to the target so you create this target and you just have to pass that to the get request and dot await and this is it this was all you had to do to make a request but the main challenge here is to be to work with files and those temporary directors and directories and, and folders and all of that so 
what we'll do is we'll take a mutable variable called destination and we'll create a file name which is based on response and in the response you'll have your so this dot we can actually place it here dot url and then dot path segments and we'll say and then segments segments dot last dot and then you'll check if the name is empty so none else we'll give it some name and then you will unwrap it at tmp.bin okay so we have done all the config here for the destination where we want to get this file and here we'll print the file name so if you remember in the in the demo I showed you we were printing out the name of the file to download and the name of the file to download is basically f name that we have created here f name this one right so that's the name of the file f name put a semicolon there make sure you close this off with the single inverted comma now you in the f name in the file name you will use temporary directory You'll get the path for the temp temporary directory and then you'll join the file name there so at the end right when I'll, I'll actually show it to you maybe you're getting confused uh, where's the ubuntu um, yeah so here you can see that we printed out two things the file to download this what we just did this was this is our file name f name and now we also want to print out where will it be located so to to get this right we'll have to get all of this first we'll have to prefix this example and get like create all of this whole link and then we'll display it okay so i'll switch back to my vs code so here you've taken temporary direct name and join that with f name and temporary directory dot path temporary directory is this right which has already has a prefix uh, example and you already have a temporary directory here new basically creates a new temporary directory so you will join that with f name f name being the file that we are downloading which is basically that 5 and 2 by 5 and 2 image um, now that we have f name right we can print out the actual message that we see in the terminal which is will be located file will be located under F name and then at the end is we'll actually create that file with F name so if we'll say that content is equal to response dot text dot await and finally we'll say copy content as bytes at the destination and 
and then finally everything since we're using result and everything goes well then we'll use okay so you can with the result you can use two things right error and okay so here in this case since everything will go okay till here then we'll say okay at the end so this is your program now it's possible that you don't know how and then works which is it's a very common thing in rust so let me show you actually uh, because i can expect that that's the question that i might get <laughs> so i'll show it to you so uh, then is used when you want to do something regardless if the future was successful or not whereas and then it runs the closure only when the future succeeded so it'll run all of those things that we saw all of those things only when the future succeeded right so we all know how futures work in rust and then and and then are two different things okay and you might also see or else so all of this happens when we're using results so we're using results in uh, in rust so this is what i wanted to show you in case you're not uh, aware and let me look at the code let me look at more things that can be problematic uh, for you guys um, i think everything else is quite straightforward right I think it's very straightforward only the thing that might confuse you would be this because this is something i'm using for the first time but this is a very very common uh, syntax i mean you'll see this used being used very very often uh, and this is just to do like perform operations you know based on success uh, the only thing is that uh, there needs to be space here not because it will lead to errors but because that's just the right way to write this code so we'll just put some spaces here uh, ideally, the IDE should do it for you, but I don't know why they why it didn't do it for me. Uh, everything else looks okay. What we can do is we can go ahead and try and run this code. Um, so I will switch back to the uh, to the Ubuntu. Yes, and now we can try and run this. So we'll say cargo run. And it'll take a while to run. Uh, depending on the internet connection, it'll take a while to build. So what I'll do is I will pause this video for a while. I'll come back once it's done. It's stopped building now, and I can see that there is an error. There's an error in the terminal. So what? Uh, and I actually know where it's uh, coming from. So we'll go here to our um, to our code window and see here it should have been name dot is empty and name not not dash is empty so I will uh, switch back to our terminal and try to run this and see if uh, that fixes it but it doesn't fix it it will have uh, it's saying something else it's saying uh, the async keyword is missing okay that makes sense because I do also don't have the async keyword which I should because that's why I got the whole Tokyo in there so I will also add um, the async keyword. All right. So here at the at the top, I hope you can see my screen. I'll add async here. That's how I've used await. So that's the beauty with uh, Rust. It'll tell you exactly what issue is there and where that issue is. Uh, now I don't know why my terminal is not showing up. All right. So Ubuntu. Okay. Here it is. So let's run it again. See what happens. Cargo run. Cargo run. It's building. We'll wait for a while again, I think. So I'm back. And here you can see that uh, it's finished. It's running. File to download and located under everything executed perfectly. Now this code is already on GitHub. Make sure you compare your code with that and everything will work fine. I hope you enjoyed this video. We did a lot of things this time and we're building up on our knowledge, right? So now when you look at uh, Rust codes on, on GitHub, a code in the project, you won't be very surprised because you've seen so many things, right? You've seen how to use Tokyo, how to use uh, request, error chains, and async. <laughs> a lot of things you've seen, how to download images, how to call APIs, a lot of things you've seen already. Okay, so we'll be building on this knowledge in the next video itself. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video.